right, in this video, we will be reviewing all of Unit 11 of Chemistriana's Equilibrium. The entire unit will be reviewed. First, we have to start off with Lesson 11.1, Chemical Equilibrium. What is chemical equilibrium? Equilibrium is a react. So, a, re a reversible reaction is a reaction in which the products can react to produce the original reactants. And chemical equilibrium is when the rates of the two reactions occurring are equal. Equilibrium can only occur when products and reactants can't leave the system. And the quantities, the concentration of them are not necessarily equal. It's just that they're occurring at equal rates. There's multiple types of equilibrium. Phase equilibrium is when the rate of one physical change is the same as the other one, like when you have water that's turning into water vapor. The driving forces, the forward reaction is maximum entropy, and the reverse is minimum enthalpy. The conditions for phase equilibrium is that it must take place in a closed system. Dynamic equilibrium is the motion of the particles moving at the same rate, it's balanced by the interaction of the chemical particles. Solution equilibrium is when the is in saturated solutions when the rate of materials dissolving is the equal to the rate of the crystals coming out. Chemical equilibrium is when two chemical reactions are occurring at the same rate, and they can be shifted by putting a stress on the reaction. So in this, when you have the carbon dioxide gas becoming aqueous, if you open a soda bottle, then it'll the, the, the CO2 gas will escape and it's going to mess it up. So this is an, uh, that's an equilibrium graph. But you know it's not a good chemistry on this video if it's not one lesson. Lesson 11.2, equilibrium constants. This is a very mathy, 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 mathy lesson. Very mathy, mathy. Um, yeah, there's math on this and it's going to suck. To have to explain it. Um, this unit sucks. Did you, did you know that? Also, so does my chem grade. Anyway. 11.2 is how can equilibrium be represented mathematically? And this is the law of chemical equilibrium. The equilibrium constant is KEQ. It illustrates the relationship between the concentration of the reactants and the products when a reversible reaction has reached equilibrium. It's the ratio of the molar concentration of the products compared to the molar concentration of the reactants. So, C to the C, B to the D, over A to the A, B to the B. If you have A plus B, turning into C plus D. Brackets indicate the concentration of the material raised to the power of the number of moles in the chemical equation or the coefficient. So in this case, if you have H2 plus I2 making 2HI, you have HI squared over H2I2. Also, you omit pure solids and liquids from the equilibrium constant, and it only takes into account those substances whose concentration can be varied, which is gases and aqueous solutions. So the significance of the KEQ values is as you can see below. In this case, you could see that there's more reactant and product. And in this case, there's more product and reactant. They're equal if the number is exactly one. So a large KEQ equals indicates the formation of products. Small KEQ is the formation of reactants. Um, the equilibrium constant will only change with an change in temperature. So you calculate the KEQ given the given concentrations. Um, this is the ice chart, initial change equilibrium. Um, so this is one that doesn't actually need it. If you have 0 0.04 molar NH3, 0.2 molar N2, and 0.6 molar H2, um, and then the H2, you have 3 H2, and the N2, 2 NH is that. You have 0.6 cubed times 0.2 or 0.04 squared, and that's 27 as that value. Um, this is an example of how you would actually have to use the ice chart. Um, anything on the left, you always subtract. Anything on the right, you always add. Um, 
you know, ice tots can actually be confusing. Um, but, you know, if you see, you have the initial and the product initial should always be zero. And then you have to add them with the equilibrium constant and you get those values. And then you find a KEQ. So, you know, it's not, it's not too bad. It's just a little bit of math um, that you should probably memorize. But that's what studying is for. Lesson 11.3, solubility product constants. Um, okay, so, so, how does equilibrium occur in solutions? Well, when ionic compounds are put into water, they can break up. And the solubility constant product is KSP. Table F is actually determined by this KSP value. The solution must be saturated, and solubility is temperature dependent, so it's constant given a constant temperature. Um, solubility will increase with an increase in temperature, except in gases. So how is equilibrium re represented in the KSP um, expression? Forward reaction represents the material dissolving in and the reverse is when precipitate forms. And this is an example. When you have BaSO4 solid, it becomes Ba plus 2 aqueous and SO4 minus 2 aqueous. The KSP is the Ba plus 2 and the SO4 minus 2. This is another example. The significance of the KSP value is that the KSP can be used to compare the solubility of substances. Large KSP, large solubility. Small KSP is small solubility. Um, so in this case, PBCL2 is the most soluble at 1.7 times 10 to the negative 5th, and the least soluble is FeOH2 at 7.9 times 10 to the negative 16th. The solubility product constant of KSP is when an equilibrium constant relates to the equilibrium between a solid, solid, and its ions in solution, and it's a quantitative measures measuring the solubility of a slightly soluble salt. So to find the KSP, you do that. So if you, by experimentation, find out that a saturated solution of BaO4 at 25 Celsius contains 3.9 times 10 to the negative fifth molar of Ba plus 2 ions, then what you do is that you, is that you, you have the ice chart, um, the change... It starts off zero, and then it changes 3.9 times 10 to the negative fifth, and then you have to multiply the two values together. You, you do have to multiply in the ice charts. 1.5 times 10 to the negative ninth. If the KSP of lead chloride is 1.17 times 10 to the negative fifth, in pure water, you have to take 1.17 times 10 to the negative fifth and multiply by x and 2x squared. That's 4x cubed, and you get 1.43 times 10 to the negative second molar. To predict the formation of a, of a precipitate, um, what you have to do is that you have to do the math and look at the KSP value. And if Q is greater than the KSP value, then you'll have precipitate. So that's how that works. And then we have 10.4 Le Chatelier's principle, a.k.a. the worst thing you're ever going to do. Like, I'm going to be honest, come on us. It just keeps getting harder and harder and harder as it just builds on each other. I mean, I have a lot to study. Oh, well. <laughs> so, how does the system behave under stress? Equilibrium is changed when the rates of opposing reactions are no longer equal and the concentration of the reactants and products are no longer constant. A stress is anything that disturbs, an that disturbs an equilibrium. Concentration, temperature, catalyst, pressure, and common ion effects are types of stresses. So Le Chatelier's principle states that when a system in equilibrium is subject to stress, the equilibrium will shift in the direction it tends to counteract or relieve it. So shift right is forward reaction is favored, and shift left means that the reverse is favored. You have to just do so much memorization. Like... That's all this is. Uh, so addition, the reaction shifts in the direction that uses up the added material and removal shifts in the direction that makes more of the removed material. So in this case, if you add 
NH3, it'll shift right, increase the NO2, the, the NO, the H2O, and the heat, and decrease the NH3 and the O2. Remove the O2, it'll shift left, increase the NH3 and O2, and decrease the NO, H2O, and heat. Increase temp. It favors both the reverse and forward reactions, but not equally. It favors a reaction that absorbs here the endothermic. Decrease will favor the reaction that produces heat or the exothermic. So in this case, for endothermic, it's considered to be a reactant, and in the exothermic, it's a product. And this is an example where if you increase temperature and you shift left, you'll increase NO3 and O2 and decrease NOH2O and heat. Shift right, you'll increase NOH2O and heat and decrease the NH3 and O2. Catalyst is not a stress. It has no shift in equilibrium, but it helps reach equilibrium faster. So when asked what, what will help improve equilibrium, you can always add a catalyst. Pressure only affects gas. If you increase it, it'll favor the reaction that forms the fewest moles and decrease or favor the one that has the most moles. The Haber process was a process used with ammonia during, by Germany during World War I. They'd use it to make explosives. To increase the production, you can increase the pressure, decrease temperature, increase concentration of reactants, decrease products, or add a catalyst. The exception is that high temperatures are being used to bring the equilibrium quicker. Finally, the common ion effect. If you have a slightly soluble salt, like hey you I, which is a KSP of 4 times 10 to the negative 19th. If you had NAI, which is very soluble, you'll increase the I and you'll shift it left and you'll increase the CUI, but decrease the CU and the I and the KSP due to the reduced ions. This dissociation of a slightly soluble ionic compound is increased by adding to the solution of readily um, and reliably soluble ionic compound as an ion in common with a slightly soluble compound.